Hello there and welcome to a brand new episode of Hala Kuwait. My name is uh, Tariq Al Aryan and we're coming to you from the Ministry of Information Studios right here in downtown Kuwait. And I hope everyone out there is having a great evening wherever you may be watching tonight's episode of the program. Well, we're back uh, right here in the studio and I hope everyone out there is enjoying uh, their evening. Uh, right now we have with us, uh, right here in the studio, we have with us uh, Mr. Izzy uh, Foncardis and he's a certified financial educator. Uh, Izzy, welcome to our program, Hala Kuwait. Okay. Good evening, uh, Tarek. Uh, thank you for having me here. A pleasure to have you with us uh, this evening, uh, Izzy. I mean, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about the workshop titled Building a Strong Financial Foundation. You're going to be presenting a workshop, and what's this about the uh, uh, Building a Strong Financial Foundation? Yeah. Actually, it's a, it's a financial concept that we are teaching since 2012 here in Kuwait. And it consists of five modules that we teach a lot of people, all, all of our attendees. And at the end of the workshops, uh, they learn how to increase their cash flow in terms of uh, managing their debts and reducing their expenses. Uh, we also teach them how to actually properly prepare for retirement so that they can uh, maximize their retirement times where, where they stop working. Okay, and also, you've said a lot of valuable things yeah. here, but right now we want some tangible things. So tell us, how can people, uh, tell our audience low, how can they build a strong financial foundation? Yeah. Give us some information, some tips, please. Yeah. Actually, the first uh, steps that you can do is to actually invest in yourself first. What does that mean? Uh, learn about more. That's a big word. A lot of people yes. say invest in yourself. Yeah. But what is that? It's all about uh, learning. For example, if you are interested in doing financial uh, literacy, you need to learn how to read books on financial matters. You need to also have a group wherein they can help you with how to grow your finances as well as um, looking for mentors so that those people can help you because they are already doing what you want to do. So you can life. learn from a mentor. Yes, yes. So in, in that aspect of finances, somehow you can easily learn the, the ropes because you have somebody teaching that for you. So that's how you invest in yourself. So what else? Then? You can also attend seminars that, like what we are doing for the workshops because it's all about um, teaching you the right strategy so, so that you can properly grow your money and s prepare actually for the future. Yeah. What else can people do? Tell us more about, I mean, these are a few things. What other tips can people do to have a strong financial foundation, save money, and as you said, prepare for retirement also. Yeah. So when they retire, they're financially secure. Another thing that you can do is definitely you need to pay yourself first. You know, once you receive your monthly income, if you have a business or, or if you have a salary. Let's say most people do not have business. Most people have a salary. Yes. So what would they do? Uh, pay yourself first. That's the first thing. Actually, what we teach is this concept. We call it abundance formula. 100% of what you have. We teach people that 10% of that you need to give it away for charity, for donations, so that you can become generous in a way to help other people. Because when you give, it gives, comes back to you. Yes, definitely hundredfold sometimes. And 20% of what you have is definitely you need to save it for the future. So do investing, do um, setting up your own financial growth and save that money for the future. And the remaining 70% is what we do with that is spend it the way you have it for your expenses. On your daily, expenses. let's say, monthly expenses to the next month. Yes. So in that way, those 30%, you set it aside immediately and forget about it because it will grow for the future, that which we can, you can use eventually when you retire. So you live within your means, those 70% only, so that you will not be, you know, sometimes we feel that the salary is not enough, Actually, it's enough. It's really up to you how to handle it, you know. So if you handle it 70% only for expenses, then definitely 
you, you, you are on your way to grow your finances. So why is it, um, Izzy, that most people really, like you just said, they always say they never have enough money. They never have, they're always short, they're always this. Is because they want to live above their means? I think most money problems are really about mind problems. About? Mind problems. Okay. You know, uh, the reason why people are poor, because they don't have the mindset of the wealthy. Mm -hmm. The reason why they, they cannot cope up with, with all the expenses that they have, because the habits of being a wealthy person, they don't have. So once they adapt, and change their mindset towards financial growth, definitely what the wealthy are having, they can have also. So if, if the, the mindset is changed, what, what we have right now, for example, those people watching right now, what they have actually is a result of their internal being. So you know what you see around you is the result of what you are doing inside you. So once you change inside, then the outside will change as well. So in Excellent. terms of finances, you need to change first internally so that it can be reflected outside of your life. So what are some more tips to uh, learn how to live uh, like the wealthy then and learn some tips like that? Yeah, uh, for example, if uh, as I've said, sometimes our, for example, most of the people, especially employees, is earning, for example, if I compare it in a car running 100 kilometers per hour. Sure. Expenses sometimes shoot up 120, 150 kilometers yes. per hour. They go over that limit. Yeah, so if, if just think about it. If, if you have a 100 kilometer per hour salary and you're expend, is spending 150, so where that 50 KPH came from? Yeah. It goes to the debts. So if you have credit card, definitely you swipe it out until you cannot pay it anymore. So first thing you need to do is to check your expenses. Maybe you can reduce that. Maybe you have gym membership that you don't use anymore. Better cancel it out. If you have expenses that you can actually control, remove it so that you can reduce your expenses and definitely it can help uh, grow your finances also. So there's some good tips and this will all be taught in your workshop? Yes, yes. They can learn uh, more about it once they, uh, they attend our workshop. Okay, and where are these workshops held or where do you usually give? This one coming up, where is it going to be? Uh, this one will be going uh, to be held in Fahil. So uh, we have also financial classes being held in our Philippine Embassy here at Kuwait. So we have it every Friday so they can attend from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock. And it's free for everybody. So as long as you want to learn about financial education, we are more than happy to help you out. You recommend investing in different things if you have some money extra to invest? Yes, yes. Actually, uh, Tarek, there's three types of investment that they can in get into. Uh, first type, they can go into real estate. So if they have real estate, they can rent it out and they can have... Uh, some income coming back. Yeah, rental income coming in. Uh, they can have also set up a business. So even while you are working, you can actually have a business right now. We have internet helping us, helping us for e-commerce, for example, and online marketing is there. So it's a level playing field now in terms of having a business. And then finally, they can actually invest in paper assets, we call it, uh, like the stock market or mutual funds, uh, even time deposits, you can use that. or. Um, as everybody knows, savings account actually, but that's very low in interest. But somehow they need to set it aside that it grows money so that it can help them to grow their finances. Yeah, I think it's very important, as you said, to do a little bit of everything, but live within your means. Yes. Not to go important. over like the speedometer of a hundred, not to try to live 150 or 200. Yes. But sometimes we all fall prey to that. Right? Yes. It's human nature sometimes, right? Yes. How do you get back on track then? Because uh, we all sometimes, let's say 100 is our limit, we all sometimes may go to 150, 60. Yes. But how do we get back? The, the best thing... That's I, an important thing. Tell yes. us how to do that. The best thing I can recommend is actually look at your reasons or your big why, why you are saving your money. So. As long as you have a big why that will uh, compelling that 
will help you to save money. For example, if if the why is bigger than yourself, like uh, I want to bring my kids to a good school of my choice, then that that's very compelling so that you can save money for education. If you don't want to retire poor, maybe that's a big why for you that you can hold on to so that you can save money. So as long as your why is is big, then definitely you have the urge to save money because you have a big reason that you need to fulfill. Mm -hmm. So you need to go back to your why because even if you have a financial education like this, if you don't have the enough reason, you will not save money. So if the why is big, the how will follow. So it's very easy to save as long as you have the big why in, your, in yourself. Yeah, so I think a lot of it you have to, let's say, train yourself Mm. on doing some of these things, correct? Yes. That takes time a little that bit, especially time, if you've yeah. been living a certain way. Yes. Take time to change these things, right? Yes. You notice people are receptive to change or it's difficult? Actually, um, people like change, but they don't want to be changed. I think that's the, that's the twist about it. We, we like change, definitely, but the way people asking us to change Maybe sometimes we don't like that. Yeah, sometimes people say they like change, but they're really set in their ways. Yes. It's hard to convince them to do things different. Yes. And you know, Tarek, how to do that is that you need to relate, to have that relationship with that person so that once the relationship is there, your habits, you can actually uh, share it to them. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning you can actually infect them on how you do it within yourself for example, I have a habit of a wealthy person. Once we have this relationship of hope that I can actually help you with that, once you see me doing it, definitely once you realize it, you have the right facility uh, to change yourself as well. So it's really about the habit that you are doing. And at these workshops, are these all uh, topics that you discuss? Yes, yes. It's actually a combination of Tell us about it. personal development and financial literacy. Such as, as well. what do you mean by personal development? Uh, like, for example, how to lead yourself so that you can actually uh, reduce your expenses and increase your cash flow. So we'll teach you the proper discipline and commitment so that... Uh, how can we do that? Tell us briefly, you know, since you're with us right here in the studio. Yeah. So commitment, basically, again, I'll go back to the why that you need to have. So if you have that why, you have the commitment, and then if you surround yourself with the, the people which, which is like-minded, definitely you can actually adapt those habits that they have. So if you have those uh, like-minded people surrounding you, because environment is very important, so with these workshops that we have, all people attending there, we encourage them to apply what they learn. And if new people come in and they see people uh, saving money for the future, definitely they can actually apply that so that they can do what those people are doing actually. Very well said, Izzy, and we appreciate your time with us uh, right here on Hala Kuwait and wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Tarek. Thank you. It was a pleasure to have you. We were speaking to uh, Mr. Uh, Izzy uh, Funkardis, uh, certified financial educator. We appreciate his time with us this evening right here on Hella Kuwait.